some men off too, it's very good to see the form of your trees, otherwise you start from scratch again. So I need some more colour here, balls. I don't know why this video keeps shutting off on me. I'm not an expert at these things, so. I suppose you can set how long these uh, iPads take for, and this one doesn't seem to do very well, but anyway. Oh, I'm darkening up a bit. This is all a bit too uniform here, this bit. stuff in here. So I've got a bit more interesting here as well. So I'm using my horizon. I don't know if the first video shut off. Anyway, I've put the horizon going down this way a bit and coming up here. This is the tree uh, the bush line. It was pretty straight in the photo, but that's a bit boring. So composition is always important. So I'll just put uh, some darker stuff here because it's down the bottom. And I shall probably go over this with some other colours later on. And just try and keep there. Not too much any white spaces here. There are a few. The reason being the silver birch has got that in its bark. Lots of white areas and I don't want it to be... Yeah, here's a bit too light. And I'll go over that. So I don't want too many white... Yeah, it seems to be taping now. I don't know why it turned off just now. This doesn't look much like a sapling at the moment, but it will at the end, and this doesn't either. So, give that a bit of that. So, our first coat for the sky, that will do a bit more colour there. That dark can stay there, perhaps there a bit darker. Need some more colour for that. Turn off for a moment. So, as you can see, we're using the form of the trees, but we're not using the colours. Well, not completely. It's a bit too blus, too. Whatever blus is in English. So we're going to also liven up the bottom here with some real autumn fire colours but darker as well, darker than here because I want these trees to really stand out and we're not going to be putting in thousands of branches and stuff but we will put some detail in. So this area here is nice and dark here, I'm going to darken up a bit here because it's right down the bottom with some of this violet meat that gives it a bit of atmosphere Go 
over it too often if you want the paint to really lay thick. So I'm going to leave that there, that there as well. This has got light and dark in it, which is also good. down into the face, change the palette now, I've got some autumn colours here, I've got a darker green in there I shall use, that's at the bottom later on, so I've cleaned the palette knife up a bit, so you've got to remember with watercolour or any paintings really, the light colours you've got to start with, um, because it's easy to darken a painting but very difficult if you with acrylic you've got to go over it all again if you want to lighten it up so don't mix too much red in at the moment so I'll take some of this and just put in some shapes and forms Again, without mixing too much. Because we want these to be like sort of tree shapes, uh, leaf shapes afterwards. Not too bothered about keeping the form of the tree there, but I'll try. Keep two colours on the on the paint on the uh, palette knife at one time. Always gives a nice mix. So it's naturally extreme at the moment, but we're going to break these colours down. And we just want a nice light background to do that. doesn't have to go right the way across, such bright colours we can start putting in some darker colours. Intense red over there, and darken up here, I've got a bit of uh, violet colour, if you can see it there, but be careful you don't dirty the colours. darker at the top there, and it goes lighter at the bottom. Telephone. See who that is? So, no one important. That's the trouble now. I've got the dark on the palette and I want to go light there. 
so that's not too bad though because I'm coming in from the right so I'll just leave this tree out at the moment and they same as ever So this works really well on the canvas, this, and you've got light colours and dark as well. You work the one into the other one. You get that down here as well. You can start even putting in forms of uh, this is sort of bushes and stuff with the edge of the um, palette knife to give a bit of structure in it. Got a stall in the back here. Still taping, yes, we are. So, over this yellow, we're going to put some orange blobs like trees, little leaves, and stuff. Um, clean the brush off a bit here. sunlight's a nightmare. <laughs> I've got a bright stripe here and up there so, so I'm just putting in some darker stuff around the base of these trees here. A little bit of form. much there so just give it a squidge if you've noticed you ever look into a forest or tree there's thousands and thousands of different tones you can't do them all but lots of broken areas it's always interesting so not too bad. Now these trees they'll have lots of things growing out sideways here but I'll have to paint dry first for that. Um, yeah. In fact that's probably what I'll have to do a bit now anyway. I'll just, I'll just put a few uh, a bit of undergrowth here. Okay. 
So I think we'll have to let that grow a bit hard. Don't want it too dark yet down the front. So I've got some colour there that's going to probably go hard on me, but that's acrylic. You can't do much about that. You never put too much on your palette. Still taping. I don't know what happened at the beginning. Why it kept going off anyway. Um, so, can we see what's going on down the bottom? Let's go back a bit. So, oh, it's all back to the front. So, yeah, so we've built up layers of colour, got the form of the trees, and we're going to hope that all of that abs abstract in the background is going to be set off by some detail with these tree trunks afterwards, let's see. Oh, hot. So we've got the background in. We'll start doing uh, something with these trees. So I'm going to take, they were actually, oh dear, oh dear. So I had to change the angle of this uh, camera because this sun Right, but we're going to try and get some colour all over this area. It's a little bit difficult at this angle because I've got light coming through the paper now. And I doubt, yeah, I doubt I didn't want. Why that hasn't dried, I don't know. Must have been pretty thick but I'm going to put some blue in but not like that <laughs> right get rid of that I'll just cover that up a bit that's the trouble with acrylic it's very strong I mean a bit of it I'm going to have anyway like this because of the dark, but I'd like to choose where I'd like for it to have that, and not have that picture top down here. trees do have this, but I didn't want it in cerulean blue, I want it in a darker blue. So I'll put some of some of that blues coming out of there of course. Oh dear, is that another piece there? Yeah, that's dry of course. Well, let's see. This is how I put the detail in anyway with these. I don't want that particularly there. I don't want that there either. So I'll just get rid of that. Okay. Well, this sort of effect is actually what I want. I didn't particularly want it in that very light blue. So we want most of the light here. This has now gone a bit blue in it, so I'm just going to fix that a bit more further. Off this time. Blue is really strong. So I'm going to throw that across again. Uh, that bit of blue in there is not really a bit tight in the face because I think all the blues come back again, of course. 
which is actually what I want. That's what I want. straight out of the tube here <coughs> so it's just gone hard could have left it a bit longer now you see that anyway this is actually what I wanted to do Too much colour. This feels very strong. I mean, it's darker in places. That's also good. Edge. And we've even put in some side branches. Just from this warehouse, right about there. Standing in the weather camera. Yeah. Oh, sorry. What's that? Ooh. It's a print, yeah. Uh -huh. That was the wife putting in on the act. So. could of course just use colour here, blue, and leave the white of the canvas looking through. Gives a crisper effect that this is a bit too, too regular. 
I can cure that perhaps by taking off some paint without knocking the painting onto the floor. So I'll dry pad it, put that down for a moment. This is how they do them, they have these thin bands and then now the sun's coming your way, oh it doesn't give me any peace today. Trying to get it to hit directly on the side. <clears throat> so I've got some small details here. Don't overdo this either. Birch does has a fascinating bark. Got a couple in here as well. A bit too much there, I feel. Let me just give it a squeeze all over again. It's hard to see because the light is coming through the paper, the canvas. A bit difficult to see how it really be. This one's shaping up okay here and I haven't put any white in. So I might carry on that way and see how it looks. Let's try it. That means there's no real white base, but it gives me a much interest, more interesting um, background. Let's see if I got up to the wide base. Too much. Um, let's try and whiten that up a bit. Sometimes where you're just trying to clean your brush, you get the most interesting effects. So I want some white now. Yeah. So we're sort of doing both at the moment, using white and the blue. So not a bad idea. And these of course very strong to keep cleaning off the product knife. Mm -hmm. This one I like more than this one at the moment. That always happens when you think you know how you're going to. Mm -hmm.
bit darker, so the shadow is the other one up to here. Again, we don't want to overdo it. Up this way. Trying to give the impression that they're round, of course. That is coming up to the side of the mass. This goes incidentally much better in watercolour. You know you don't use a palette knife normally in watercolour, but for this it works brilliantly if you've got a nice structured paper and load the edge with the colour. You've only got one chance of course, but you pull it across and it just settles on the high point of the paper. It looks very good. So this is quite good here. This is in the foreground, so it's darkened up this tree here. I have to put some shadow in at the back as well of these trees since all the light's coming in here. Now this first one's a little bit uniform here. I'm going to try and break that up again here with some light. It doesn't always have to go all the way across. Let's set that up again. Same up here. This light and dark is just what these silver birch are actually like. They are continually changing lights and darks. And the smaller ones don't have to that much detail behind all the rest. So 
There's a, a tray for you upstairs somewhere. You really want the sun, don't you? Oh, 26 minutes I've been on this bit. Okay. So some of it's looking okay. This is a little bit contrived here. Get rid of it. Give that squash. Right. in this one that's what we're going to do we're going to so I have to let that dry off a bit go through there wasn't it yeah, it doesn't have to be the perfect shape of tree. Rye does most of it. A lot at the back here. Same again. Could be a bit wider now. Took two trees actually to get on it. I don't want it to be too detailed because shadows do all sorts of funny things like that. But they have got to be there somehow. So here you're going to have all sorts of things going on in the background. They don't always have to go perfectly the, the same way that uh, trees grow. trees have got tops so they'll go here and avoid exactly the shadows but don't want to overdo it. And here there's going to be a bit as well. If that tree's in the shadow it's going to be a darker blue, it's not going to be a brown is it? So 
I'll just stuff some stuff at the back here that's in the bin. really like that bit there. Don't want to scrap it. Alright. Get rid of it. And I'm going to cut that down as well. Off there. We're not painting from a, we did have the picture at the beginning as inspiration but we're not following every detail of a, of a paint or of a photo. Just darks and lights to give the impression that something's going on over the back. Some might think that the forest is on fire there but it's an autumn scene. If I started putting in red leaves at the top here that would look kitschish so I'm not going to do that. This is a little bit straight here. Um, I've got some blue on here but let's just get rid of some of that straightness. That's it. And about the same there. A bit too straight everything. That is the one problem when when you're painting not really from a picture just from sort of memory type I never did it the same as nature but a little bit that's all right it's as though there's something going on here dark after these trees yeah I'm not going to bother too much. I'll put a bit of darker colour down. I've got some red here as well. As though the leaves have perhaps fallen to the floor and are rotting. And it's darker shading here. Some other trees that are over here. That's how it was as well. Uh, Undergrowth here coming up. Same here. Darker twigs sort of flowing up from the foreground here. Coming in. Now watch this colour now. Here's a dirty brown. Don't want too much of that, so I'll leave that off. Leave that off. Go to that blue. Now although you haven't got blue, you might say, in the foreground you have here, don't ask why. Yeah. Instead of using black or dark brown, anything could be going on here. That's where every artist does his own thing a bit then, so not too, it's getting too dark, dirty down there for me, so I'll put a bit of blue in there. This green is okay, it's just a middle green, shouldn't be doing, these strokes make it look like there's something been growing there, or was, put some in here, break up those shadows, same there. Take that off a 
Yep. Like that as well. Yeah. That don't I don't like either too much. Yeah, it's dark enough. Okay. Could scatter some light bits there. I don't want it to look kitschy, so I want the leaves are falling down. I might put a couple of red blobs there. I'm running out of paper to clean my, my thing. Sun's gone, isn't it, Lawrence? Okay. Anything to divert the eye away from. These can't be poppies at this time of year. They die in vegetation, it just breaks up the coloured areas here, which is all you're trying to do is to get some some more coloured. Could put some yellow in there as well if it was like this, but that'd probably be too much. I'll leave that like that. Don't like this much. Don't know what I'm going to do about that. But uh, yeah, other than a couple of hours we've been on it. I'm probably going to put, I haven't got any black, I've just noticed black um, acrylic, but I've got black ink and I should probably put some of these detailed lines in black. I like that, but we'll see. Yeah, that's broken the back up a bit. It looks like it could be in shadow. Yeah, slowly getting there. Don't want to overdo it. That's always a danger. So where's the off button? 